Okay, Charlton back here with episode three review. Overall, good episode. Um, lots going into me saying it's good. Um, it's kind of given me faith in the series more. Uh, overall, I would give it a eight. I'm just going to dive into the sequential series of events, but a lot of the positives I'm taking away from this episode are, you know, I'm seeing more the screen, the screenwriters and the whole team making this. I think they made some overall good decisions when it came to what to cut, what to leave in and what to condense down. So, you know, getting into it, um, you know, the Oxford Five are back together again. Um, here they have some of the better dialogue that I've at least seen them have so far. Nothing really else to report on. I mean, they're, you know, exploring the whole situation with the VR headsets and slightly advancing um, the plot along. I, where it really gets interesting for me and where it really deviates from the book and the TV show, you know, then you're getting into Jin and Jack, um, Jin and Jack, uh, talking about what they have now observed of the, you know, three, the three body problem, the VR experience, um, where, you know, Jin is listing out on her whiteboard a few numbers and kind of coming to the conclusion that it's a three body problem. My only complaint here is that um, they're kind of jumping a couple steps. So I think in the Chinese show in the book, it's very interesting how um, you see them trying to figure out like when a planet is coming towards you. Well, hang on. They think that the suns are planets for a while. At this point, since we've already kind of just jumped the shark on all of this, I, I might as well tell you a little bit about what you miss are missing out on. So in some of the earlier VR dives, um, one of the things that really confuses the main characters who do, do their dives um, is that the, um, the suns, when they're far enough away, they don't look like suns anymore because of like atmospheric effects. Um, and they end up looking like planets. So people are constantly confused if there's three suns or what these other planets are doing and why suddenly a sun appears when they were expecting a planet. Um, so that level of complexity, I think would have, that's why, you know, solving the puzzle is so amazing. I think if you're, again, if you're just watching the Netflix show, you wouldn't have come to the conclusion that, oh, these people who are real big wig physicists, um, you know, used all of their brain power to solve this puzzle. It's just kind of like, okay, well, they solved it. Um, so, okay. Um, but yeah, so it, just discovering that the planet sun you know transition depending on how far away they are um that was kind of one of the cruxes uh, you know and one of the problems and the crux to solving um the problem because from there you could get into oh okay well there isn't a so in mathematics you would call it like a discrete um solution which means like a you know at a time t down the road you can predict you know knowing the initial state you could predict the position of you know three bodies so uh, three body problem um it gets very interesting when we get into let's just jump then into the computer scene so the computer scene is like a um the i may be wrong on this but there's like a method where you essentially like break down t time into you know little sub steps right and you're like okay well if we do, if there's no way to have a discrete solution to the problem we're going to just step by step iterate through okay body a is at position one body b is at position two okay they have these and oh and body c is at position three okay they have these forces interacting on each other okay now tick the clock forward a micro tick okay they've moved now they have these forces um, I, I, I kind of thought it was similar to uh, something you might call like Euler's method. Um, but then again, you know, I'm not a mathematician, so, you know, feel free to correct me. But it's essentially a method for iterating to find a solution, often in a differential equation. But yeah, they go to compute, they go to a computer equivalent. I think um, the Netflix show really nicely lays out that the soldiers are arranged in like a circuit board. Um, God, they were so close to nailing this though. And here's where they could have 
cut out some of the stupid dialogue and focused more on one of the things from the book. Although, so the book had this like, oh God, I think it almost went on for, I mean, about 40 minutes or 30 to 40 minutes where the, <laughs> the characters are just describing how a computer works, how you have like the processing areas, the bus, the RAM, the hard drive, input, output, how different soldiers are doing different things. And then one of my favorite parts is <gasps> part of the computer has an error, right? Because it's like, it's essentially alluding to like what the failure rate of each, each like bit um, can be like that's why the computer maybe won't work is at first they were thinking well you know you have this failure rate you know one soldier flips the card incorrectly and uh, but so they have a failure in the computer <laughs> and the way that the king uh, solves it is by like executing that entire like sec you know essentially like squad or company of uh, soldiers <laughs> replacing them and uh, then running running the calculation again. So I don't know if it matters at all to so the overall story. It's just you all, if you're Netflix version only watchers, you're never going to get to experience that unless you go and watch a different version. Does it matter? I don't know. <laughs> I thought it, 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 it's, again, it goes back to my last video where I kind of talk about um, every part goes into making this beautiful work of art and it's all necessary, but okay, maybe, you know, it was a very memorable part. Um, I think Jen and Jack do a really good job in this scene. I think it's actually super cool. Um, that and this is a part new to the Netflix, you know, they throw in an action part where Jin is like, okay, we're being boiled alive, I can solve this, hit fast forward. And um, that's pretty cool. That wasn't in any of the other versions. Um, yeah, I think that's a, you know, pretty, pretty strong part. And then getting to see the part where, you know, you end up having essentially like neutral gravity, um, very sobering. It's a good large scale epic scene. Um, I wish there were a few more of those, but such is life. All right, um, Raj and his father being introduced. I have no clue what's going on there. I mean, these aren't characters from the book. Um, I think they have some important role to play. Clearly, it sounds like Raj's dad was like the equivalent of a Medal of Honor winner in India or something. Uh, the thing I wanted to do here, though, was talk about, like, the international scope of the story and how I think they're kind of starting to get with it in the Netflix version, but they've still been very, like, London, England-centric of the show, which I will say is a negative. Okay, so what's my take on this? Um, there are some sh shows, I mean, I think, like, maybe Mission Impossible might be an example of this, right? Where they're like, okay, well, we're gonna have these amazing sets in, you know, you know, Budapest, you know, Tokyo, Dubai. And there, and at time, like, and I've always loved that, but there are times where you're like, okay, are you substituting like amazing shooting locations for story? Um, I, I think sometimes you'd say yes. Um, in this story, that should not be the issue. Okay, like this story is supposed to have um, building epic nature. And the only way I think you can have that epic worldwide humanity connected as a whole, you know, it's like looking down at space or looking down at Earth from space. Like this is a story that spans the globe. Um, one of the things that no one in the Netflix story has been getting is kind of the sense that like all of Earth is starting to get spooked in the present day by the fact that like all this is happening. This isn't just London scientists. This is like German scientists, Japanese scientists, Russian scientists, American scientists. And just the, the, the chilling effect that this is a worldwide phenomena. And they're bringing together like UN type style groups of, you know, high level military intelligence, governmental people in order to respond to that. One of the things I think the Chinese version did really well is very early on, you're like, well, the Chinese like general who's like overseeing the intelligence operation in China is like meeting with, you know, the Americans and yada yada. And it's always it's always funny to see how the Chinese portray, you know, an American military person. <gasps> But um, I'm not gonna, you know, don't let me get sidetracked on that. Um, 
I could see, but yeah, I, I definitely really like that they're bringing in an, someone who with like international ties early, but please start using it. Like, please start using it. Like, please cut to India. Uh, please cut to America. Please go on site in those locations. I'm hoping it does. I mean, those of you who've watched the whole thing already, it, you might be like, they don't. You're just in for disappointed. Out. Like, that's that's rough. Um, I, maybe they ran out of budget for remote sh shooting locations, but man, you could have just done real quick, you know, onesies and twosies, like real quick scenes, just to again, just give that scope like my only complaint of the show well not my only complaint but one of my main complaints right now is that they're they're letting us down on broad scope gravitas um in exchange for having a strong character driven and sh trying very hard to keep the audience the audience focused on the the story because i i think everyone knows that this story has a very easy ability to get confusing so they're probably approaching i think they're approaching it more almost like a theater production where you you know you have limited numbers of people on stage and the actors work off each other to give the story which i i'm i'm gonna say okay yeah good on you but i think you could also do that with you know, some things that people might say are distracting, but again, actually add context. Um, <clears throat> there's a scene where Will is talking about how he had a conversation with his tumor and he's like, I understand you, you, you need to grow somewhere, but you just can't grow here. So this is kind of getting in now where I think um, the show is coming into its own. It's different than the books and the Chinese adaptation. And that's good. Okay, so dealing with the early stages of like, you know, the invasion, the, you know, anti-human or anti-human, you know, or anti-Earth human alliance of aliens on, which, you know, I'm just going to call them ETO, okay, uh, Earth Trisolarian uh, Organization, I think, um, they... Uh, um, you know, in the books, again, I, I told you at the beginning, I hung on every word, but there are parts I didn't really track that well of how, you know, things were coming together, where people's allegiances lie. And in this Netflix show, they're just being more clear. Um, so this first scene where, you know, or this scene where Will is talking, kind of alluding to, you know, people may have sympathies for the aliens, even though they're probably gonna conquer us, um, but kind of giving a little bit of context, people be like, hey, we, we made a deal, the tumor isn't gonna evade me anymore. Like that, I like that. That is really the direction I hope the series goes in. You know, they do not need to have this be the one-to-one -one cre recreation of the book that's been done by the Chinese version. This is the chance to make it appeal to a larger audience, make it so the larger audience still can understand what's going on, and then also give the larger audience um, a lot of the themes, you know, um, and one of the themes that I think has always been hard to digest is, you know, why would humans turn on other humans? Um, it, it's something that the author, I mean, probably didn't necessarily need to include, but I, I, I mean, again, like his work is a composite of multiple, you know, really good ideas. Um, and that's, I think, why it stands the test of time. I mean, people say this book is probably like the best sci-fi book in 20 years. Um, I, I mean, it, it, it is a composite of many, many strong thoughts and narratives. Um, let's see. Um, oh, man, uh, you know, Augie just trucking along with her nanotech. Um, company, uh, it, 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 she, her whole story just continues to not work. I mean, um, one of the things about Augie's character, you know, Wang in the book, um, uh, again, Wang is split into five people, um, is that like the team really respects her? Like uh, in, in the in the da Chinese adaptation, like you can tell like the character is having problems, but there's never like some showdown at the office and. You know, threat of being, you know, uh, 
<laughs> deported. <laughs> it's just, uh, I feel, I, I do now feel bad for the actress for whatever material they're putting in front of her because like, it's not just the line she has to say, but it's just the plot points that she has to act out. I mean, this is, this is tough. Um, but, you know, maybe it, it can be, as soon as this whole like, uh, storyline maybe starts to wrap up maybe you know we, we we can still get it over the goal line um finally so mike evans having a talk with you don't know who um this I, so i was telling you earlier like the mystery component was lacking well now we, we we're getting a little more mystery with this um, I think this is a great scene. I think this scene may have been in the book. I apologize if I don't entirely get that right. You know, there's certainly like allusions in the book that he's having some communications. I don't know if they directly had a scene where there's like essentially some, some somebody representing the Lord. Um, I think it actually would have been good maybe if they would have brought the Lord in earlier um, in the entire sequence of events. Like just the concept that there's this like godlike entity like are these people like succumbing to like theistic you know cult-like behavior um and then it would be even more of a um kind of a twist or a when it's discovered like oh no this isn't like uh it's not it's not a cult it's aliens um so a little bit of misdirection and that's more of actually what goes on in the book so um, one for the book. Um, but yeah, the whole thing with Mike Evans, like explaining and discussing his, you know, you know, or Mike Evans kind of being told the alien views on, you know, Darwinism and survival and how the humans are not really, <laughs> any human who would betray their race isn't really acting rationally. Um, and wouldn't survive is um I, I think is really good i mean i think that's the that sort of you know expository section and condensation of many ideas is not something that happened in the book but i think that's a good good way to do things I, in some ways i think it's better than in the book um because you know, there's a risk you don't end up understanding entirely what's going on and how Mike Evans, and Mike Evans like kind of gives a little bit of a feeling that he may be a little bit in over his head on this. I don't know, I don't know if he's, I don't know. I, I, I think he's discover. I think he's discovering things in the process of communicating with this, you know, alien um, that um, as you would expect in theoretical real life would be, um, you, everyone be, would be learning a lot at this point. Um, I think Jin and Jack, you know, sitting down with the, you know, the, the spy, the ETO agent, um, and then, you know, going, uh, is one of the best scenes in this entire episode, as it should be. Um, you know, they, those, those actors work well together, um, seeing how everyone responds differently to, um, the essentially the un you know the the in state of this mystery situation you know with Jack and Jin having very different responses for kind of you know fairly justified reasons um you know this is you know this exact scene is you know is not in the book um you know but in the book you know they're brought into a like more of an auditorium where there are more people and you see some people accept it and some people reject it. I don't think there's any illusion that the people who reject it actually are killed. I think they, um, I, you know, which is kind of funny because I actually like that they are tying up, like at the end when Jack is killed, like they are tying up a loose end. It actually makes more sense. So uh, you, as I've said before, like you've got to be internally consistent. And sometimes I, I, I thought the book maybe, ha there is room to improve on the book. And I think this is doing that. So I I like that they're trying to actually keep the story tight and they probably felt like in the book that that wasn't quite working. So we're going to, you know, really keep the story tight. So that's why I'm saying I, I have a lot more hope for the direction that the series is going in. Um, 
you know, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, some, one, there was someone who posted in uh, my last re video review, like, I really hope that, you know, you know, this series gets enough acclaim that they're able to make, you know, the second and third book. Um, and I completely agree with this. I think it, it probably will make it um, I, because I, 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 I haven't really been looking too much at the reviews, but I think they're good enough. And I think it's going to... Um, it had at least a little bit of a cult following. Um, I, and it probably, if it's not getting great views, you know, the opening weekend, I think it's going to have legs. Um, because this definitely has, this story has meat to it. Of course it does. I mean, again, I told you, I think it's one of the best IPs to adapt um, of the decade. But um, Netflix and D&D &D and everyone has done a good job of keeping, you know, keeping this have, you know, meat, meat on the bone. Like this is not a hollowed out show. Um, it, it still has, you know, the big ideas and it's, you know, with a little bit of, you know, the, this cruise flair, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, and of course, you know, we get, um, we get the scene of the fleet taken off at the very end, which is just, you know, wow. Um, very excited to see that put to, you know, put to film. Um, the scene where Jack is killed is, and then Dashi is not not able to see what's going on, um, is chilling. I think, you know, that whole part of that end is just the best part of the show so far. There is, you know, this is a new take on the scientists dying or committing suicide or being murdered just well not a new take a new um a, a new like exact events right because it happens very differently um in the source material um but it it's i think it's doing good justice to the source material um and it but it has to be condensed because it would have been hours and hours and hours and hours and hours if they didn't condense it at all um i'm hoping dashi like <laughs> dashi hasn't had a chance to really do much so far um so they they still have another episode or two to use him um and i hope they do uh i'm worried that if you were to describe like like dashi there's one thing you can do, like, is try, ask someone to just try to describe a character in like three words. Like Star Wars, this is always a good example. You're like, well, Han Solo. You're like, oh, you know, roguelike, you know, um, passionate and uh, violent or something like that. You'd be like, oh, you do that for Luke, okay? And then people are like, okay, do it for Ray, and you know, everyone kind of stumbles. It's like, what three words am I going to use for Ray? Um, it's right now with Dashi, like in the book, you would be like dedicated to the job, um, savvy and, um, decisive or something along those lines. Adashi in the show, I don't know if that you would immediately be able to say like that about him. And as such, is this a well-rounded character? Tough to say. Um, so I hope that they build him out more. And so there is some degree of payoff. Otherwise, final point, the show still needs more people in its scenes. Um, I understand they may be going for more of a theater-esque um, type, but just to give an idea, this is a point I remembered. You know, in the very first, one of the very first scenes of the Chinese version, just at the murder site, they made a big deal. There were like 20 cop or cars, you know, or one of the, one of the first suicide cop scenes are like 20 cop cars, right? And it's just like buzzing with activity. And in the Netflix show, it's like one police officer showing up or two and they are losing the sense of scale and the the world will grow soon um that's one of the big takeaways you i, I don't know if y'all are familiar with some shows or stories where the world grows greatly and then but some of the best stories ever are like that you know um you know harry potter when suddenly the death eaters comes in the and you know there's just going to be a wizard war like that's the world growing right um in uh what's another oh lord of the rings you know i mean going from the hobbit to the ring war that's the world growing um 
one of my favorite attack on titan when suddenly you discover there's a land across the sea that's the world growing um there are, this story does that but it, it does that this is the best for the world growing um, but we haven't really defined the initial world that well. But maybe maybe the producers are going to have a series of like the world growing. Um, and so, you know, we may be in store for something, but this, I, I don't think this works all, if you go all the way as a character driven, you know, almost theatrical production, um, again, it's gonna lose the gravitas of the situation. All right, well, other than that, let's move on to episode four, but overall, showing some, showing some promise. Y'all take care. Bye.